Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So today is the day I get to start taking apart the, the beetle. Uh, my goal for today is to get the fenders off, get the glass out, get the doors off, basically strip down the body so it'll be easier for me to remove the body from the pan. Um, as you can see in the background, I'm already starting to collect some parts. I've got a louver deck lid. Uh, it was a great suggestion by a couple of commenters in my previous videos. Since this engine is a larger engine, it needs more air. More air than these factory louvers can provide, so I got a later model uh, deck lid. I got real lucky, found one locally for a really good price. I've also got um, a new rear apron, new to me. Um, it has never been installed, um, but it was sitting, and it's actually the same uh, person that had that deck lid. So um, I got pretty lucky with those parts. The price was great. But the goal today is to get the bumpers off, the fenders off, the doors out, the glass out, the seats, and uh, get this beetle ready so I can pull the body off the chassis. So stick around and. Uh, I'll try not to make this too boring. So I backed up the rear of the bug, or jacked up the rear of the bug, and uh, pulled off the bumper. And, you know, the bolts are pretty rusty. They're, they're really uh, stuck in there. I've already twisted one off. So that's going to be interesting. I'll just have to be a little bit more careful. I wasn't using anything other than, well, I tried my little impact wrench, but that wasn't doing anything. I was just using a little 3 8 inch socket wrench and twisted the head of that bolt right off. So I expect that's not going to be the last one to do that. But uh, now that I've got the bumper off, I've already disconnected the wires for the, the tail lights. Um, so I'm going to pull each each individual fender off now. Well, I got both rear fenders off and from what I can tell it looks like I have a fairly new shock that's been installed on both sides but the ball joints are in really bad shape and most of the other rubber parts are in bad shape back here so only the shock was replaced at some point. Um, Right here, I don't know if you would call this a rocker or whatever it is, it's pretty rotted out. So, uh, not a big surprise. It wasn't a huge shocker. You know, other things that I, I knew I was to expect is like a couple of these, uh, the nuts, you know, been, have been pulled out. And considering that the rear end here had been in some type of a collision. Uh, it's actually nice that only one on this side has is, is, uh, been pulled out. I also have one pulled out on the opposite side. I'm not sure if uh, there's been collision damage here on, um, on this side. Um, so I'll have to take a really good look and make a determination whether or not uh, this side needs repairing. I don't see the typical like creases and and popped paint where you would see if there's been an accident. Uh, the rest of this well is fine. Again, new shock. But as you can see, well maybe you can't, but you know like all the other replaceable parts back here are in pretty pretty bad shape. This rocker or corner or whatever you want to call it is solid. There's nothing wrong with it. Really the whole passenger side of the car is completely solid. So something about the driver's side that uh, accumulated all of the rust. I'm in the process of taking apart, taking off the front fenders, just trying to figure out um, the best way to get the lights out. <clears throat> you know, there were some splices here inside the headlight bucket. 
I don't even know how to get this trim ring off. Uh, maybe I just figured it out. There's only the one screw, so I'll figure that out once I have two hands free. So anyway, working on the front end, and I'll come back once I get the front fenders taken off, and we'll take a look under, under those fenders and see how bad it is. Well, I got the front fenders off, and once again, it looks like a fairly new shock in here. Um, maybe not. This one looks maybe a little older. Um, there's no, there's no in play in the bearing. And I'll have to uh, get a good look on those ball joints. It looks like there's some newer front brake lines and. One thing that did come as a pretty big surprise to me here is I've got uh, I've got disc brakes. I don't know if you would focus on there. The lighting is really poor, but there's disc brakes in the front, and um, so that did come as a surprise. Uh, the 68. I'm not even sure if disc brakes were an option back then, so this might be an aftermarket deal. Um, so that's pretty cool. Save me from having to do a conversion. This is the worst part of the rust in the whole car. It's right here in the front corner of the cab, uh, right behind the fender. I know this is a trouble area for most, but you know, so I've just been poking around to see how soft it is, and so pretty much, you know. All throughout here. Hey, a penny. A nickel. Sorry, I got distracted. There's another coin. Look at that, I'm making money back as we speak. An old quarter. 1970 quarter. You know, I'll just keep going until I can't, you know? It feels like... Well, there's been some... There's been some Bondo work here. So there's a layer of... There's a layer of under coat like that, that's peeling off. Then there's a layer of Bondo right there that you see me peeling off. And then behind the Bondo, is the metal or the rust and there's a ton of money in here you can hear the change falling out I'm assuming this is a I don't I I think there's this cavity right there's for, that goes straight down here and this is where that cavity ends I don't know why there's money in here unless it's fallen from the dashboard from the inside so, so I'll have to figure out where where the damage ends on all this I'm getting to pretty solid metal now. I gotta figure out what this is here and what else I'm dealing with behind that. But one thing which is a plus and was one of the main things I was concerned about was if you know the bottom of the door if that was rotted out or not, and that's solid as a rock, so that's pretty good. I, the heater channel all along here is fine until you get to about right here. And you can see where it's soft. And it's finer on here again, and then it's soft here again. So that's obviously gonna have to be repaired. And it goes, it, it travels all the way up here, right above the jack point. In, in the back corner where there was that other rust that we had seen. As far as the other side is concerned, 
Um, this side has been great to work on and everything. There's no rust. None of the bolts were seized. Uh, so it's strange that the driver's side is the side that has all the rust. It may have been just the way that it was stored or, or whatever. There is the collision damage on this side. So it's, pre it's pretty pushed in pretty good on this side. And um, the uh, bolts even, like that bolt wasn't even in the fender. It had pulled out of the fender. And then that backing nut was pulled out. So. But uh, this side is doing a lot better than the other side. So I won't even have to do any body work on this side. So I'm happy about that. Okay, here I am at the end of day two. And here's the carnage that lays before me. I've stripped most of what I want to get off of the bug on uh, these past couple days um, some notable things uh, the, the doors are no joke to get off luckily I did have an impact wrench or whatever impact uh, screwdriver thingy uh, just because I've seen other people struggle with the hinge screws and these were no exception um, I found I think everything inside the bug that makes it complete all of the engine tins and even the even the gasket that goes around the engine and was in there as well as the original air cleaner if I decide to use that um, what else I didn't realize and it's just because I don't really know anything about Volkswagens that I didn't realize that the rear seat actually folds down so that was pretty cool um, discovery let's uh, go in take a look at the beetle. So before I take the body off the pan, I, I want to remove the windows uh, just for that little bit of weight reduction and I want to tuck the windows away somewhere safe so I don't accidentally break them. Um, I may have glossed over this. I knew I had a Colorado license plate in this because this bug originally came from Colorado but I didn't realize if you take a look uh, check out the the year on that license plate So that's pretty awesome. I don't know if this is the original license plate to the bug or if somebody just grabbed That license plate because this is a 68 beetle, but uh, That was a pretty interesting discovery there um, Nothing really of note uh, Getting the seats out was pretty challenging you know, the driver's side seat was only on one of the rails, and so it was all cattywampus and didn't want to slide out. The other side slid fine, but part the front part of the rail was bent up for some reason. It had like a dent in it, and it was making it so I couldn't get the seat all the way off the rails. And then to top it all off, I've got this rubber pad that's over the carpeting, that's over the sound deadening material and so it just made it very difficult to move the seats at all I had to actually use I put this piece of wood up against the back rails and used a hammer to, to move them forward because this rubber pad you can kinda of see there where it just had been rubbing all these years and it was more of a hindrance than it was a help um, but having said that the carpet underneath the rubber pad besides all the uh, stuffing from the seats the carpeting under the pad is pretty pristine it's a shame that I'm gonna have to tear it out the I, I think I mentioned this before the battery tray is completely solid there's nothing wrong with that um, you know for, for the most part this is a very very solid car besides the rust all along here um, it's really just this whole heater channel is a problem uh, it's the only rust that I have and then the collision damage which I still have yet to figure out what I want to do. I have come to the realization that the front collision on here has actually bent in this fender. Um, I, I wondered why this door didn't fit right inside here um, and normally by comparing to the other side the fender just kind of supposed to go straight and then bend where the fender meets it but this actually rolls in and is almost parallel 
to the fender bevel right here. It's parallel to that same angle as the fender here. And it actually travels all the way down. There's a tiny dog leg in the door seam. Um, you can see it here. So that hit was that hit was hard enough to actually affect the door just a little bit. So I've got my work cut out for me. I don't I've never done this type of body work before. So I'm gonna wrap up this video. Um, I gotta clean out the rest of those goodies, take out the the windows, and then I'm going to split the body from the, the pan. I did have one question, maybe those of you that have uh, stuck around this long in the video to, uh, are, are enthusiast enough to maybe have the answer for me. What in the world is this hole for? Does anybody know? It wouldn't be a speaker hole, would it? So, I don't know. Hopefully somebody knows. And I'll do some of my own research too, to maybe try to figure out exactly what it is. Whew. It has been hot. 100 degrees and 100% humidity. I'm wearing my silly do-rag here. I'm trying to uh, trying to help myself out a little bit. I I built a wall of fans, you know, and I crack open this garage door and have those fans on high, and then in the other the other garage, I just have the entry, the side entry door open. It does create a breeze, but you know, it's a hundred degree breeze, so it's like you know, hanging out in a blast furnace, I guess. So. Um, having a good time though. I'm learning a lot and um, it is still a little bit overwhelming just the scale of everything that needs to be done here. I'm not trying to make a show car. I just want it to look nice and um, you know and unfortunately that's going to involve repairing or replacing a lot of stuff on this car. So um, this is the end of day two. Thanks everybody for sticking around, thanks for watching. Leave your comments below, any and all advice. Like I said, I don't know much about these, I'm learning as I go. And uh, there's a couple of you guys out there that have already given me some great advice, so I thank you for that, and uh, uh, keep the advice coming. Thanks a lot guys, I'll, I'll talk to you guys next time.